So we got a lot of alcohol questions and we got a lot of alcohol questions related to sleep. One of the most frequent questions is, can alcohol consumption screw up my sleep? I think the answer is hands down. I don't think anybody who has had a drink and gone to bed will say otherwise. I think there is some confounding data. It is a sedative. Alcohol is a GABA agonist. So it will put you to sleep quicker. You will lose consciousness more quickly, but we should never confuse a loss of consciousness with falling asleep. You've heard me say this before a million times, I'm sure, Bob. If someone took a baseball bat to your head, you would lose consciousness. You'd be laying on the ground. You wouldn't be moving. You might look like you're sleeping, but there's nothing that's happening in your brain that mimics sleeping or the restorative nature of sleeping. So we never want to confuse consciousness with sleep. So alcohol fragments sleep. You wake up more times during the night. Sometimes you don't even realize you're waking up, but if you do, again, pay attention to a sleep tracker, you'll probably notice more wake-ups. And it seems to block REM sleep more than non-REM deep sleep. So if you recall, I talked about this with Matt Walker a lot in the podcast. I think it was, what episode was that? The first one, I think. I think I got it. Episode 49. So I notice this personally as well when I have more than probably even two drinks is enough to have this impact on my sleep. Very little change in my deep sleep, but my REM sleep gets very disrupted and gets displaced by more wake-ups that I don't necessarily perceive and more light sleep, stage one, stage two sleep. It's not clear what the mechanism of action is. It might be the aldehydes that's been speculated. So that's a byproduct of ethanol metabolism. Bob, do you know more about that? Yeah, no, I looked. I couldn't really find much data on it. I know Matt talked about that a little bit in his book. Another study found in rats, they talked about the reduction in glutamate. They called it alcohol-induced suppression of REM sleep. So that could be one possibility, but there hasn't been a lot of digging into it in the literature. So I don't know. Interesting. Okay. So the long and short of it is alcohol is reducing REM, not having much of an effect on deep sleep. In fact, in some cases, it can actually slightly increase deep sleep, definitely reduces or can reduce sleep latency. So you can fall asleep quicker. It overall reduces the quality of sleep. And this is going to be relevant, I think, as we talk about the impact of alcohol on diseases and how much of that may or may not be mediated through the disruption of sleep. Okay. Next question. Are there any indicators of poor sleep I can track to see how one or two drinks affects my sleep? Yeah. I can just tell you that in me, alcohol will impact kind of the four biometric parameters that I do pay attention to when I sleep. So resting heart rate, heart rate variability, respiratory rate, and body temperature. Now, again, it's a function of how much I drink and when I drink in relation to sleep. So kind of a single drink four or five hours before bed really doesn't have an effect on me. But two drinks, which is kind of the most I ever drink, it's very unusual that I would have three. I guess it's, I could probably drink three over an afternoon and evening and not necessarily notice an effect. But if you start thinking about kind of dinner, having two drinks, then I'll start to see a deterioration in sleep. And the closer those drinks are to bedtime, so if it somehow turns into even an after dinner drink or something like that, I'll see my resting heart rate really go up easily six, eight beats per minute. My heart rate variability will be dramatically compressed at a minimum 20, 25%, but I've seen a 50% reduction of HRV if that alcohol is close to bed. My respiratory rate goes up by a couple of breaths per minute and my body temperature will go up by 0.3, 0.4. And it, this is also dependent on food. So you also have this thermogenic effect of food. So the more closely I'm eating to bedtime, and that's often something that unfortunately happens with alcohol is you start eating more, that'll just drive my body temperature up. Okay. And you mentioned too, so you're looking at your aura ring for REM sleep. So that could be another indicator too, if, if you can track REM sleep, you might see a little bit of a decline compared to a night of non-drinking. Yeah. And I suspect that the aura ring and all wearables are using those inputs to determine sleep staging. So a follow-up question to that is, why do these metrics matter if your body temperature is increased? You could see it overnight, but say your body temperature is increased before you go to sleep, or your respiratory rate is increased, or your heart rate is up. How can that impact sleep? 
basically these things all suggest to me, and I don't know if this is true, but it just seems to me that all of these things are suggestive of more sympathetic tone. Thank you for listening to today's sneak peek AMA episode of The Drive. If you're interested in hearing the complete version of this AMA, you'll want to become a member. We created the membership program to bring you more in-depth exclusive content without relying on paid ads. Membership benefits are many, and beyond the complete episodes of the AMA each month, they include the following. Ridiculously comprehensive podcast show notes that detail every topic, paper, person, and thing we discuss on each episode of The Drive. Access to our private podcast feed. The Qualies, which were a super short podcast, typically less than five minutes, released every Tuesday through Friday, which highlight the best questions, topics, and tactics discussed on previous episodes of The Drive. This is particularly important for those of you who haven't heard all of the back episodes. It becomes a great way to go back and filter and decide which ones you want to listen to in detail. Really steep discount codes for products I use and believe in, but for which I don't get paid to endorse and benefits that we continue to add over time. If you want to learn more and access these member-only benefits, head over to peteratiamd.com forward slash subscribe. Lastly, if you're already a member, but you're hearing this, it means you haven't downloaded our member-only podcast feed where you can get the full access to the AMA and you don't have to listen to this. You can download that at peteratiamd.com forward slash members. You can find me on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook, all with the ID Peter Atia MD. You can also leave us a review on Apple Podcasts or whatever podcast player you listen on. This podcast is for general informational purposes only and does not constitute the practice of medicine, nursing, or other professional healthcare services, including the giving of medical advice. No doctor-patient relationship is formed. The use of this information and the materials linked to this podcast is at the user's own risk. The content on this podcast is not intended to be a substitute for professional medical advice, diagnosis, or treatment. Users should not disregard or delay in obtaining medical advice from any medical condition they have, and they should seek the assistance of their healthcare professionals for any such conditions. Finally, I take conflicts of interest very seriously. For all of my disclosures and the companies I invest in or advise, please visit peteratiamd.com forward slash about, where I keep an up-to-date and active list of such companies. Mm-hmm.